Hello and welcome to the program Hot Button. So many relationships have folded up because of what a partner in the relationship may have classified as toxic behavior or abusive attitude in that relationship. A lot of people frown about it, society frowns at it, and parents, I'm sure of course, frown at this particular thing that we find very rampant in relationships these days. Most times they don't come as glaring uh, as we can physically uh, see, but if you look into certain things that go on, it is either a kind of level of toxic or abusive relationship brewing. And today we have parents in the studio to discuss this particular thing with us as it affects young people and their relationship. My name is Johnny. I have with me on the program. This is Yetunde Imam. And Theodore Dixon. Welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. It is a pleasure to have you join us on the program today. All right, today we want to look at the topic, toxic slash abusive relationship. And we are here today to know what parents think about this particular thing. In a relationship, you're meant to have conversations yeah. continuously. You're meant to be free with your partner, but you find yourself picking your words, not being free with your partner. That's it. It's it's a toxic relationship for me. I completely stand against it. Why should you enjoy a toxic relationship? Wow. When you see that this thing has happened first time, second time, third time, and you are still there, if relationship. If you endure a toxic relationship you for so long, yes, it, it, it can produces make you yes, a toxic a person. person yes. OMG. So let me start with your pastor. What is your idea of a toxic or abusive relationship? Well, you can, you can delineate what becomes toxic or abusive relationship by looking at what is the real relationship, what is the intended purpose of a relationship. Mm. Um, when we enter into a relationship, it's supposed to be mutual, supposed to be cordial, supposed to be peaceful and harmless. It's supposed to be a situation where there's mutual love and affection, mm. where there is protection. So the absence of that, you know, makes that relationship dysfunctional. And then um, a relationship can become abusive when um, the interest of the other person is, is not protected, when there is harassment, mm -hmm. when there is um, ab abuse can be physical or verbal, okay. Okay, when there is no more respect. In fact, somebody made a statement that he said, um, this relationship, describing a particular relationship, he said, this relationship finished long ago because in this relationship, I see that these people don't have respect for each other. Mm. When somebody loses respect for the, his, his or her partner, certainly that relationship becomes toxic. Mm. It may not be abusive. Mm. It, it may not be uh, verbal or physical, mm. but in a relationship where there is cold war, mm. you know, where there is silence, that can mm. be toxic. That can be toxic. Very, very toxic. There, it's okay. not abusive. Yeah. It is not, there's no verbal anything. There's no injury, but okay. I don't talk to you. You don't talk to me. If I want to talk to you, I write you a note. Mm. That is already toxic because emotions are drained mm. and somebody can even go into depression. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Let me hear from you. Let me hear from you, madam. Now, for me, if a relationship, as in dating, a guy and a girl, they're still dating, if that relationship is toxic, then there is no God in it. Mm. A toxic relationship is a relationship where there is no oh God, God okay. in that relationship. Hmm. So the it, absence of God in a relationship leads towards toxic yes. relationship. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, now, how do parents, you know, your parents and then maybe your child is dating someone, be it a girl or a guy. How can, how do parents find out if their child is in an abusive or toxic relationship? What are those signs that parents, you know, would get to see and make them think that something possibly could be happening? If you know your child, you will know his or her moods. Okay, that's number one. Okay. Because um, we're talking about young people who are not married, which means it's possible they are living with you 
or they are not living with you, but they, okay. they are living elsewhere, but they talk to you. Um, by the time you notice that the, the bonding or the flow between you and your child is not cordial, or mm. your, your child is talking to you, if the person is not living with you and then um, the voice is down or the person is not just up, you know, the upbeat is not there mm. or the person is living with you and then um, you discover that the person is suddenly withdrawn mm. or don't, doesn't feel like talking, then you know that something is wrong. Mm. It may not necessarily be, you know, a case of abusive relationship, but something is wrong. Something so is wrong. You're, you, you, you may have to find out, try to find out. And each time you, try to find out from your child what is going wrong and he or she is not talking to you, mm. then you know that something deeper is wrong. Then it's, it's an opportunity for you to, you know, try to probe to find out what mm. is happening. Okay, so once you see those things, it yeah, is an opportunity for you of, to of, come of course, Of course, if you are also attentive, mm. you know, today young people do a lot of talking on phone. When your children are talking, it's not necessarily like you have to encroach, in, encroach into their mm. privacy, but it's good to be sensitive because okay. when somebody is talking and then the person is raising his or her voice mm. or behaving in some unusual manners or crying then, you know, or, or crying talking. you know it, that shows that something is okay is wrong. okay let's hear from you madam how to know whether your child is in an abusive relationship, relationship yeah. and i'm going to answer this from my own point of view Wonderful. from my experience exactly yeah. that's what we are here for. from my experience okay thank god my firstborn is married oh great with children great before she got married, she mm. dated a guy, and that relationship was toxic. Mm. So how I knew that the relationship was toxic was, number one, Holy Spirit helped me. Mm. Holy Spirit kept on revealing to me things that I needed to know about that relationship. The first thing I knew was, on my birthday, mm. My daughter was still in school then. She was still in the university then. Okay. And the boy too was in her department. So she never told me about the boy. She just told me, I have a friend. Mm. And I know you have a whole lot of friends. And so on my birthday that day, she said, mommy, mommy, someone wants to greet you. Mm. So she gave the phone to that guy and he greeted me. But do you know that the moment that boy spoke to me on phone on that my birthday, Something told me in my brain, record his voice in your brain. Mm. What could have told me? That was the Holy Spirit. Mm. Okay. And so God helped me to record his voice in my memory. And so he greeted me and I thanked him for greeting me. And so some few weeks after that, I set my eyes on that boy. Myself and my husband, we came checking on our daughter in school. Mm. And immediately we came. This guy greeted us, and immediately he greeted us. The Holy Spirit reminded me again. That's the voice. Yet today, that is that voice that wished you a happy birthday. And I knew that was a signal. And I was waiting on God. God, what actually do you want to tell me about this guy? And so their relationship continued. And I saw that constantly, this boy was always moody. I saw that he does not wear a cheerful look. And I knew that things were happening. So I kept asking my daughter, hey girl, is that something you're not telling me? She said, mommy, I'm fine. I said, you? You are fine? Hmm. I know you are not fine. <laughs> okay. I know you are not fine. Okay. And because I am a Seventh-day Adventist, my children, my husband were Seventh-day Adventists, definitely. And my husband as a pastor, and me being a child of God, mm. I want my daughter to marry a born-again Seventh-day Adventist young man. Okay. And so I asked my daughter, this guy, is he a Seventh-day Adventist? And he said, uh, Mommy, you know, uh, he's not yet a Seventh-day Adventist. So God already started telling me what I needed to know. But mm. she quickly added, but she will soon, he will soon get baptized. Mm. I said, indeed. Mm. Okay, I'll keep watching. I'll keep watching. But you know what? Something was not connecting between me and that guy. Mm. And you could figure that out from the way... Holy Spirit was not connecting me came. and him. Okay. Holy Spirit was not connecting me and him at all. Mm. Whenever 
you know, we were around. He will try and put up a smile. I knew it was only artificial. Hmm. It wasn't coming from a heart that is flowing with love. And I knew something was wrong. Okay. I knew that girl was in a toxic relationship. Hmm. So how did you find it out eventually after the whole stuff? And so she called me one Sabbath evening. Ah, mommy, how are you? I was just, I said, good, good. How are you? you didn't even ask of, she mentioned the guy's name. I said, oh, sorry, how is he? I hope he's fine. She said, yeah, yeah, so she's, he's fine. That mommy, I need you to pray. He will be going for visa interview, so, so, so day. So I need you to pray. I said, oh, he'll be going for a visa interview. Don't worry, I will pray. Okay. Do you know that immediately she told me that the guy will be going for a visa interview. The Holy Spirit told me again, yesterday you better pray well that this guy will be given his visa. Because the moment he's given his visa, your child is liberated. Hmm. And so I prayed. I said, don't worry. He will be given his visa. And good enough, that guy was given his visa and he left for the U.S. And God told me, your daughter is free. And so she came home to spend um, Christmas okay. holiday, that December period. Okay. You know how girls and mummies, mm. how they talk. So me and her, we were just gisting and chatting in our own bedroom. We just sat by the dressing mirror and God just took over the, the talk. And she said, mommy, you know what? I want to tell you something. I said, I'm all ears. And she said, do you know that that guy, mentioned the guy's name, was always beating me. Mm. Eh? I said, what? I kept quiet. I had to tell myself. He said, just calm down. So that I could hear the whole gist. Mm. And she said, he had beaten her in their relationship of probably two years or something. That he had beaten her, if she could count, nothing less than ten times. Mm. Mm -hmm. I said, it's too eh? bad. I said, what? And she said, do you remember, mommy, that there were times that you called me on phone. Incidentally, you will call me after almost each round of beating. And I'm like, what? And every time you will tell me, is it every time you have malaria? What mm. is wrong? Why are you having malaria all the time? Mm. This is not you. What exactly is happening to you? And she told me that, do you know, I was always pretending mm. that probably you could be like 10, 15 minutes after he had beaten and he had left. And I would just be, you know, just covering up for you. you. So you don't But think the moment I called and I heard her on phone that time, I knew something was wrong. Well, 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 well. The moment she came back home, she decided to open up to you. But there was no moment, even though you had a little bit of feeling towards you, never, you, you didn't really probe into to know what was going on. Okay, let me come to you, Pastor. Having heard all she said, what roles do you think parents have to play in a situation where they have noticed or suspect that their child is in a possible toxic or abusive relationship? Um, for parents, it's, it could be a little difficult, except you are well trained. Hmm. And I'm very serious about it. Okay. Because sometimes, if parents don't have skills, the first thing to do is to be pr protective. Hmm. They protect their child. Hmm. Um, okay. this, is, this is not time to protect your child because you need to know your child. Some parents are not objective enough. For someone like me, I know my children one after the other. Yeah. I know their temperament combinations. Mm -hmm. In fact, if they said, I am, I am abused in my relationship or my relationship is going toxic, you can be sure that I will tell you if you are the one at fault, I will tell you. Hmm. Okay, so it's, it's for me, I'll find out what are the issues. It's good to know what is the problem, hmm. what, what are the levels of your involvement with okay. this person, what are the issues because um, as counselors, it's, it's, it's very fine to go fundamental, okay. find out what are the basic issues because every, every toxic relationship, every abu abusive relationship has an it's origin. Mm. So, that, so you try to delineate the, the factors that have led to that relationship. Mm. And then you, you, you're able to reclaim your own child first. That is it. It is good to reclaim your child, fix your house. Mm. Okay, so that you know, be sure that your child is not embarrassing the herself and or himself or the family. Because if it is your child that is, you know, causing the trouble, that is an embarrassment to you as a parent. So I'll fix my house and make sure that I let my child know that this is this. Of course, 
um, even at, at, this talk, at, this, at this point I'm talking to you, um, I have taken time to take my children through conflict resolution models, mm. how to handle conflict, how to you know, relate, because sometimes it's because we want to have it all. Mm. That is what causes conflict. Okay. It's, it's, sometimes it's, it's, we only talk about who raise voice or sometimes who raise hand. But the point is that there are remote causes. And some of these remote causes is our, how our temperament dominates our relationships. Mm -hmm. So it's important to find out and do some psychological check on okay. your child. Once you finish all of that and the problem is still continuing, then you invite the other person over you know, and have a talk with either male or female. Mm. Um, um, I, I, am, I am blessed to, you know, to have my children talk to me about their relationships. So, okay. so we talk about it. I have told them, if you got a relationship, bring the person. So we talk because we, we form family. Okay. So I'll talk to the person and find out what exactly is the point. And then from there, you know what needs to do. Okay. Now, having said that, you see, this is, that was a case of your child. Now let's flip the table around. That boy who was being abusive, I mean, he has he also has parents. Mm -hmm. Now let's imagine our children being the abuser or being the perpetrator of the toxicity okay. in the relationship. How do we find out to know that hey, this boy is being abusive in this relationship? Or the How girl. Do, yes. Or the girl as the case may be. How to find out? Number one, you have to be a close friend to your child. Very, mm. very important. Okay. Let's be the best friend that your children, each of them, will okay. have. That is what I do. Mm. I'm my children's best friend, one by one. I'm very close to each one of them. So also my husband. So when you are a good friend to your child, the next one is be very prayerful. Be very prayerful. Very important. Okay. You know, these children, they can pretend. There is something inside. There may be something else outside. So if your child is the abuser, you may not know except you're really going to prayer. Hmm. And study the boy or the girl very, very closely. Okay. Another way is be friend to the child's friend. Mm. Because their friends know them in and out. Mm. Some things that you as a parent may possibly not know about your child. You know, when they are free among themselves as friends, the friend will know. Mm. So entertain the friends of your children. Mm. Be their friend. Be free with them. One day, things will just be popping out. Mm, so they could possibly reveal but some they things. They would. Okay. They would. Mm. So those are ways by which you can know whether your child is toxic, mm. him or herself. Okay. Well said. Let's hear from you, Pastor. Yeah, you know, um, like I said, I have three biological children, mm. and I know the three of them. Um, from my psychological studies and then you know interactions i can tell you where the potentiality is so and uh, we talk about all of this mm. talk about it very seriously and then like um um yetunde has said you you pray uh, the bible says that those who seek the lord mm. understand all things mm -hmm. mm. amos 3 7 also mm. says that the lord will not do anything on unless except he reveals it to his son's prophet mm. um in my case um god has given me this special gift that he lets me know what's going on mm. exactly. as i pray especially very early in the morning he speaks to me about mm -hmm. things and then um, that has actually helped my family mm -hmm. and my children take that very seriously so I think when parents should do well to be close to God, be prayerful, mm. um, and then let's talk with our children. Yeah. Let's talk with because our children. Let's talk, yeah. let's talk these matters with our children mm. ahead of time yeah. so that they will understand. And then if you know, um, every child is unique. Mm. So relate with your children in that uniqueness. Uniquely. Mm. You know, that uniqueness. If your child has, has these threats, speak to the child alone concerning those threats mm -hmm. and let this child know that, oh, you see, these things are not strengths, they are weaknesses. You don't have to be proud of this aspect. You don't have to do this. 
and that way your child is conscious mm -hmm. and if you have entered into that kind of relationship where you can talk with your child about everything I tell you the truth when 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 they have those troubles they will call you and even if they don't call you like she has said what she said is very correct children can be protective mm -hmm. of course they can be our friends but you know my children are not my best friends mm -hmm. and uh, I can tell you ma, that <laughs> <laughs> we can try to make them our best yeah, friends yeah. but I tell you the truth yeah. when they are choosing a best friend they look for somebody outside wow. That's okay. why. That's why. It, that's why you will leave your father and mother and look for a girl. Exactly. Outside, you your, <laughs> but but the point is that we need to be very close to them, mm -hmm. to the point that we can share. Okay. When our children have confidence that we will not condemn them, when they tell us yeah. things about themselves, they will come back again to talk, and that could help us. And of course, when we pray, God can reveal things mm -hmm. to us. Okay. But most importantly, let us be proactive and lead, walk our children through these realities okay. ahead of time. And okay. then it will be useful. Walk them through the reality ahead, ahead, of, ahead time, yeah. of time. And in mm. addition, okay. if a child is the toxic one in a relationship, mm. he or she can find help through counseling. Mm. So you can refer to a therapist. Mm. Where you cannot handle it yes. expressly, you could you actually can, refer. Yes, you can Oh, refer. great. Now, there are times that this abuse goes on this toxic attitude of the, their partner goes on and there is a child who says I have to endure this and the child keeps enduring you the parent you have found out that your child is in a toxic relationship or you have found out that your child is being abusive in a relationship it's not living that life of abusiveness and then maybe you are, your child is also saying hey I have to endure this abusive relationship because I love the person. How should parents come in? What extent would you go to make sure either your child leaves that abusive relationship or the one who is being abusive completely leaves it? Let me hear from you, Pastor, and I'll come to you, Madam. Now, um, there are two different things. Okay. L let's, let's start from the point where your child is being abused. abused. Yes. Now, if your child is being abused, you need to talk with that child. Okay. You know, um, young people don't understand the real meaning of love. Okay. Mm -mm. For them, what they think love is, is the, they, they, they think about the fantasy, the, exactly. the romantic part. Mm. They don't understand that beyond the romantic part, there are other stages of mm. love. Mm -hmm. So if they don't understand, help them to understand and let them know that beyond this, this thing you are doing, there are different stages. Love is a principle. Mm. If it is not founded on those principles, the thing to do is to get out. Love is a commitment. If, if somebody loves you, the ob you can't destroy the object of your love. When somebody loves you and that person is destroying you, that person don't truly love you. Mm -hmm. That person is obsessed. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to be a prisoner in your relationship. Mm. So it's, it's good to take them through that so that they understand. Sometimes you know that, um, I, I've said this some time ago, that there are two people that you find very difficult to advise. Hmm. A young man or woman who ran into fortune suddenly, maybe a dad or mom has died and with so much money that you cannot manage. Hmm. To advise such person is difficult. difficult. And then a young guy, a young girl who has suddenly fallen in love. Hmm. Oh man, you are telling the person, in fact, when you tell them, they go and tell the other person yeah. what you said. Exactly. Because they are crazy, they don't understand. Hmm. So it's not easy when you have finished your part and you are not making headway, pray about it. <sighs> Talk to God. I tell you, God moves in a mysterious way. Mm -hmm. His wonders to perform. Now, if your child is the one being abusive, it's difficult. Mm. You have to be. You have to come with that child gradually because, look, people don't always choose to be abusive. Mm. It might be that there is something underneath. Mm. There's Definitely. something triggering that That's abuse. Definitely. It may be a sense of emptiness. Mm -hmm. It may also be um, repeated trauma. Mm -hmm. Now. There is a cycle that how a parent is treated. Let me use myself as an example. I, I grew up in a very highly discipl disciplined family. My father disciplinarian, my mother disciplinarian. So all I knew on how to train children is to be a disciplinarian. Hmm. That's what I knew because nobody went to school to learn parenting. So you trans that's how we continue to transfer what, how we have been treated to other people. But I had to stop at some point to really learn how to relate with my children differently from how I was treated, mm. how I was raised as a child. 
And that is the essence why I went into family studies. Okay. You may want to know. Hmm. I went into family studies just because of that. Because I want to treat my children differently from how I was treated. Some of these things may be that the child is treating the lady just the way he or, has, or she has been treated. treated. So many young people who are abusive do not know conflict management skills. Hmm. So why do you abuse? You think, I think um, Yetunde should listen when I'm talking. So if she refuses to listen, I beat her. Hmm. Do you understand? Exactly. Because I think that who is she to challenge me? So my, my response, my way of solving the problem is to beat her. Meanwhile, some other person who has grown up in an environment where nobody beats anybody, where people respect other people's interests, oh, I, you have a different opinion. Okay, let me hear you. What do you why do you think that way? It's solved. Hmm. So it is, it, is, it is a deficiency okay. sometimes that causes that. Except if there is a, a case where the person is using substances or mm, drinking okay. or involved in wrong companies, then you can begin to deal with all of that. So okay. it's not easy. When your child is the abuser, you really need to befriend that person, draw nearer to the person, find out what the, the, the main issues are, and don't forget to pray. Okay. Because don't that person may have more problem than he or she is causing. Okay. Now, looking that our time has gone, when you look into the camera right now, and you need to speak to a young person who is suffering uh, you, you know, toxic relationship or being in, a re in, in an abusive relationship, what would you tell that person right now? What I would tell the person now is be a true child of God. Hmm. When you're a true child of God, God will provide you with a godly child like you. Thank you very much. Pastor, if you want to talk to someone who is abusing somebody out there, what would you say quickly? I would say that, um, first of all, you know, surrender to the Holy Spirit and then learn relationship skills. Relationships don't just happen. You need to learn skills. You need to surrender yourself. Accept your assets and liabilities as a person. Accept whom you are. Assets and liabilities. You know, thank God for your potentials. Thank God for your strengths and begin to make your weaknesses, your perceived areas of weaknesses, prayer points. That way you are able to take responsibility when things happen. Relationships go get abusive because somebody does not take responsibility when he or she is strong. You know, we get defensive. So accept, take responsibility and then by the grace of God, you know, you succeed. Don't forget, humility results in exaltation. Thank you so much for being a part of the program today. Thank you. I'm Thank sure. You. A lot of young people out there have learned so much. Thank and you. I have learned so much today too. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being a part of the program. Thank you. All right, that's the much we can take today on the program Hot Botting. Join us next time for another fresh episode. God bless you.